Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. These are little nuggets I'm putting out tonight. A lot of us think that once we give our hearts and souls to Jesus and we confess our sins to God and we're filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire and we get baptized and yeah, buddy, we're ready to go. No. Let me share something with you. When you think you're ready to go, you run around letting everybody know who you who your new person is, which is good. You're giving your testimony. Leave it alone after that. This is why. Because if you are blabbing and grabbing and naming and claiming all your victories in Jesus, and you can't stop cussing, you can't stop smoking and drinking, you can't stop screwing, you can't stop lusting, you can't stop stealing, you can't stop fighting, you can't stop fuming, you, ooh, you can't stop having adult temper tantrums. You're not ready. You have to first produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's called growing. Look how long it's taken you to grow and develop into the person you become before you met God, before you decided to go his way. There's going to be a cleansing and a purging process that needs to take place at your beginning stages. You cannot get born again with a doctorate in your hand. Yet now you have to learn to crawl before you walk. You have to learn to walk before you talk. So be careful not to be so eager and so excited because yeah, new Christians, you know, like a friend of mine used to say, if a piece of wood stands still long enough, they'll witness to it. Well, that's zeal, but zeal without wisdom, zeal without self-control, zeal without the anointing of God can be a real bitter pill to swallow for the hearers and the seers. Because when they hear your words and they compare your words to your actions, what that does to them is, I told you that Christianity crap ain't about nothing. Look at that, another hypocrite. Now you've added more days, months, years to their decision to give God a try. So rather than any of us doing damage, be slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to teach, swift to learn, learn. How do you learn? You read the Bible. You pray and talk to God. Have conversations with God like you would with a friend on the phone. Talk to him. Ask him questions. Ask him to lead you to scripture and talk to you. It's not about plopping the Bible and popping it open. That works from time to time because God is merciful and he's dealing with you as a child. But as maturity comes, you have to have an ear to hear him lead you. It'll be in your mind or in your ear and you'll feel, okay, I'm supposed to read Psalms 30 or Psalms 27 or I'm supposed to read John 14 or, you know, and you'll get these inclinations and you'll read and they'll be, I mean, spot on your situation. And you'll start to realize God talks to you through the Bible as well as in your spirit. And the more you learn, it often goes like this with life, the more you realize how much you really don't know. Nobody has the last word on the word. 
no denomination, no pastor, no minister, no prophet, no leader, no apostle, no teacher, no counselor. Nobody has the last word on the word. Every denomination, every movement has a portion of it in truth and a portion well so you can't walk around like you are um an expert like you are a specialist on god because none of us has i mean we have nothing but a little pea brain when you compare it to the universal knowledge of god i mean come on don't even compare yourself so be willing to be corrected by God. Be willing when your mouth flies open and you want to yap for God to say, shh, be silent. And you be humble enough to say, hmm, yeah, maybe I better be silent. <laughs> yeah. The world is not hanging on your every word. There are times when I'll say something and I'll come back and I'll say, oh God, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said it like that or I shouldn't have done it like that. You have got to be humble enough to know that no matter how long you've been walking with God, there is a whole lot more room to grow. Swift to hear, slow to speak. Be willing to learn. Be teachable. Be pliable. Be, be easily entreated. Uh, uh, let me share something with you. I was a baby Christian, and I had been going to church, and they shared this one message about how if you are... Now, listen to this. I want to share this with you about how a mature Christian took this from me, and it made me respect her so much more because she received what I had to say. We were sitting there, and she was fussing about one of the church members. And when she was fussing, she wasn't fussing with a fam family member or a husband or whatever. She was fussing with a new member of the church. And I pulled her aside. Nobody heard me between her and me. And I said, Aren't we supposed to be careful not to criticize others in front of, you know? And she said, yeah, definitely. And I said, well, can I tell you this without you being offended? I was a little, you know, sheepish. And she said, what? I said, you remember when you said so-and-so in front of brother so-and-so? And she said, yeah. I said, isn't that what you were doing? Pat, you are so, oh my goodness. I was so wrong. Oh, you were so right on that. And she went and apologized to the guy for even saying anything about somebody else in the church. And she told him, I was wrong and I don't want you to follow that example. I apologize. See, that is the kind, that's what you call a good leader. A leader that is still humble enough to be corrected. When we get to the point where we don't want to hear it, we're on dangerous turf. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you. Don't raise yourself up and have a hard heart and make him have to abase you. You don't want God bringing you down. You don't want him to humble you, baby. No, it's better to humble yourself your growth will be much sweeter because he will correct those he loves. So better to correct yourself. It's a whole lot less painful. Take my word for it. All right. I'm going to stop there. It gives you something to think about as we all grow together. We are all growing together. You and I are growing. Nobody will ever arrive but we must be found trying striving toward perfection living a life of holiness in spite of our errors 
in spite of our momentary sins, be found shrine. God bless you.